This is KGW News at Noon. We start today's News at Noon with this. A live look from our Skycam at Stoller Family Estate in Dayton. My goodness, uh, <laughs> that looks like someone painted that picture. A picture-perfect shot from Dayton this afternoon. Early February Friday looking really good out there. Question is, how will this weekend look weather-wise all across the area? For that, we jump over to Rod Hill in the Weather Center. So, Rod, please confirm or deny this statement. We have a nice weekend coming our way. We do. And, you know, I've, I've been wondering if the temperature is going to just take off and go crazy this afternoon. Because remember yesterday, we opened up all that sun. And literally every reporting site from Albany to Salem to Portland to Vancouver to Kelso hit 60. And PDX had a record high yesterday of 62. Now, today the temperatures have been just kind of sitting flat. And winds are from the south, but they're not breezy like they were yesterday. We still have the same upper level low offshore. And we have some shower activity. So far, it's been mostly light scattered stuff along the mountains and light scattered stuff along the coast. Haven't seen much in the valley. And what we have has been primarily over here on the uh, east side of I-5. There's Malala just picking up a, really some traces of rain. The bigger story is, yeah, there's a shower chance, but overall it's pretty nice again. Partly cloudy skies in Lincoln City from the Schnook Winds Casino Resort camera there. Similar scene as we move inland. Here's uh, Silverton over on the uh, east side of the uh, valley, and they're looking out to partly cloudy skies. There's a Reserve Vineyards and Golf Club out in Washington County looking mighty nice. Temperature 53 degrees. The normal high now is 50. Okay, there's a big jump. Portland was 52 at 11, and I just saw this update. Now 56. I'd forecasted highs in the mid 50s, but I would say clearly we're going to be upper 50s. And you have to wonder if we're going to hit 60 again. Shower chance continues, but a nice evening in store. Mainly dry tomorrow. No rain chance on Sunday. So yeah, Drew, that good looking forecast coming up in my seven day. All right, that's about 15 minutes from now, Rod. Thank you for that update. We want to get to our news headlines now, and we start in the Pearl District, where police are investigating a stabbing that sent one man to the hospital. Police tell us they got a call around 7 o'clock this morning about a man who was walking around bleeding from his chest. This is video from that scene at Northwest 9th and Lovejoy this morning. That's where an officer eventually found the man. You can see the part of the town we're talking about right here on this map. First responders treated him on the scene there before he was taken to the hospital. We don't have any information about his condition this afternoon, and police tell us they haven't detained or arrested anyone in connection with the stabbing. We'll work to update this story for you for our news at 4 p.m. and online at KGW.com. Meanwhile, a father and his 15-year-old son are fighting for their lives after trying to help a woman in Kelso. Police say they saw a man acting aggressively towards the woman in the parking lot of the Kelso McDonald's. KGW's Catherine Cook explains what happened after the father and son stepped in. Kelso police say the stabbing attack happened around 1030 Saturday night in this McDonald's parking lot in Kelso. They say a man and his 15 year old son sustained life threatening injuries and two teenage suspects are now behind bars. There's a female screaming a whole lot just saying stop, stop, stop. Corey says the woman's screams caught his attention late Saturday night. He and his dog Marley were near this McDonald's in Kelso. He says the woman in distress captured other people's attention too. Specifically, police say, a 43-year-old man and his 15-year-old son. Investigators say the pair confronted the suspect, hoping to de-escalate the alleged domestic violence. It sounded like they tried to break it up. All I heard was one dude talking a lot of crap to another guy, and they started screaming at each other, and then there was a lot of screaming about stop, stop, stop. And then all the sirens and all the cops came and ambulances. And Police say the suspect, 19-year-old Cameron Kerr of Longview, and several others surrounded the father and son and attacked them. The victims were both stabbed and sustained life-threatening injuries. Police arrested Kerr on Wednesday, and on Thursday, they arrested a 16-year-old. Both face first-degree assault charges. Investigators haven't released the names of the victims or how they're doing, noting it's still an active investigation. As for Corey. It's a quiet little town, but stuff does happen. He hopes the father and son survive after just trying to help. In Calso, Catherine Cook, KGW News. Four suspected drug traffickers are facing federal charges today after law enforcement caught them moving nearly 370 gallons of heroin. 
According to the U.S. Justice Department, officers spotted the suspects about a week ago driving a rented moving truck and a red pickup truck near Bonneville. From there, investigators tracked them to a motel in Tigert where they found eight 55 gallon barrels of heroin in their truck and two loaded handguns in their room. All four suspects were arrested and faced multiple charges. KGW's John Adams is working to get more details on the investigation and the arrests. He'll have a report for us later this afternoon during the news at four. The mayor of Beaverton is responding to questions about his city's response to its homeless crisis. Earlier this week, we covered the story of a man who appeared to accidentally light himself on fire and wound up dying in a Beaverton City Park. KGW's Blair Best has an update. As Portland fights to keep up with the crisis on its streets, it seems like homeless people like Ronald turn to surrounding cities, including Beaverton. Uh, because uh, Portland and Monoma County didn't have no shelters for me and my girlfriend. James has a similar story. And there's no resources. Like, I tried to get into treatment when I came up here, and I'm still waiting. There's spread from Portland. If Portland doesn't have the services, these people are going to come into all the other bedroom communities. Sarah Toner lives in Beaverton. She sees this daily. My child goes to a school that's right across the street from a shelter. Earlier this week, a man accidentally caught himself on fire in City Park. He was life flighted to a hospital where he later died. It happened right across the street from that shelter outside the public library. And I think it's reasonable as a parent to to raise the flag of what are we doing here? In a statement, Beaverton Mayor Lacey Beatty listed steps the city is taking to enhance public safety. Those include expanding their police bike team and offering mental health support to those in need. She also notes an addiction resource center is in the works at the county level. I have a feeling the city's looking at us as if we are just this uptight, clenched population that don't want this around our kids. And it's not that we don't want this around our kids, we just want the support necessary for these individuals. Blair Best, KGW News. This year's commercial Dungeness Crab season is underway along the Washington coast. Crews there started dropping pots on Tuesday of this week and were able to start pulling them yesterday. Some fishermen in Ilwaco weren't sure that they'd be able to take part in the opening of the season this week after a massive fire destroyed thousands of their crab pots last month. But donations from fishermen up and down the coast made a huge difference. You could see the tears behind their, their faces that that's it for me. This is gonna put me out of business permanent because there goes everything. Within hours of that, there were phone calls and donations being made coastwide Federal investigators are still working to pinpoint a cause for that fire last month. All right, let's get to some of today's national and world headlines this afternoon. And we start with U.S. officials approving plans for a series of strikes in response to the deaths of three U.S. soldiers. The strikes will target an Iranian-backed militia in Iraq and Syria. Iran, meanwhile, denies any involvement in the strike that killed those three U.S. soldiers. A court filing in Georgia says District Attorney Fannie Willis is involved in a personal relationship with the special prosecutor that she hired for the Georgia election interference case against former President Donald Trump. The House Judiciary Committee already subpoenaed Willis following allegations that she fired a whistleblower who tried to stop a top campaign aide from misusing federal funds. Committee Chairman Jim Jordan says the subpoena is necessary after Willis failed to comply with two earlier requests for documents. This subpoena is part of a larger probe by Republicans into whether Willis used federal funds in her investigation into the former president. Meanwhile, in Maui, a restaurant is the first on its street in Lahaina to reopen after devastating wildfires burned much of the town six months ago. So we're talking about the Mala Ocean Tavern on Front Street. It's considered ground zero for those fires but they were able to get the National Guard roadblock to move down just a bit so people could come back to their business. The owner said opening the tavern gives him and his team hope and hopes it can provide hope to their customers as well.